Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to another edition of Understanding Adobe Photoshop. This week, we're going to continue looking at skies, and we're going to take care of a very common problem, which is, what do you do when the sky blows out? Now, we've got a tough image here, and we're going to continue our series of photos from the Pike Place Market out in Seattle. I shot the Pike Place Market sign, and as you can see here, the sky is okay, and the sign is okay. In this case, we compromised. Instead of exposing for the sky, getting the sky nice and rich and vibrant, well, that would have been great, but it would have put our sign in the shadows. And of course, we could have exposed for the sign, but then the sky would have been blown out. So we went down the middle, giving us a perfectly average and boring photo. But fortunately, Photoshop lets us fix this. By not going too hot or too underexposed, we are able to capture enough information so we could find a happy middle here and fix both problems in the image. Let's start this selection out by using our favorite tool, the color range command, to properly select the sky. I'm going to go ahead and choose select color range, and this brings up the color range dialog box. I'll click in the sky to make an initial selection, then hold down the shift key and drag through to grab more of the sky. The goal here is to get a good selection that takes in most of the sky, although you might get a little bit of the other surface here if the blue is reflecting off of the rooftop. We can go ahead and play with the fuzziness sliders here to taste, and that's pretty good. Let's just pick up this little bit of clouds here. And we'll click OK. Notice I now have a selection that entails the sky. And let's do a couple of things here. First off, I want to add an exposure adjustment layer. And we're going to go ahead and expose the sky just a little bit lower. We could play with gamma correction if we need to. And we're just getting a little bit of a darkening there. We'll now add a photo filter. and we'll go with the cooling filter, the most intense one. There we go. Play with the density to taste, and you see there that we've got a pretty good job. The sky looks like an actual blue sky again. And we'll click OK. Now, we want to limit that selection there so it doesn't affect the whole photo, so we need to apply the layer mask. You'll see here that there is a layer mask, but it's not properly applied. I'm just going to go ahead and delete that layer mask temporarily, come down here and command click on this layer mask so it's selected, and then we could reapply the layer mask. And if you look closely there, you'll see that the blue is affecting the sky, but not the rest of the image, which is good. Now that we've fixed the sky, we need to go after the rest of the image. The good news is, is you don't have to make another selection. Simply use the reselect command. If I choose Select, Reselect, my last act of selection is loaded. And we can now inverse this selection by choosing Select, Inverse. Notice that the sign and the building are now selected. Let's apply an adjustment layer for levels here, and we'll play with the gamma point here. Let's move these in and do a proper levels balance getting our whites to pop by putting the white at the rise there, the black at the next end, and then play with the middle slider here until we get the proper balance that we want. I'll pull blacks in just a little bit there, and that's looking pretty good already. And we'll click OK. Let's go ahead and do Select, Reselect again, and we'll add a Hue Saturation Adjustment layer, and simply pop up the saturation on that sign so that red neon really starts to pop. There we go, that's looking pretty good. And to finish this out, I just want a little bit of a vignette, so I'll toss on a gradient layer. I'll use a black to white gradient, and we'll set that to radial. Let's play with the angle and reverse that a little bit. And now we have a nice center spot, and we'll change that to the multiply mode and lower its opacity to about 40% or so. And you see there, you're getting a nice darkening effect at your edges. 
Let's take that down to about 30. Good. A little bit of a center focus. And there you have it. We've actually fixed the image. If you want to do a quick toggle here, you can go ahead and call up the history palette because up at the top you have the original state. Let's just go ahead and click the snapshot icon here. So now we have two snapshots and it's a piece of cake. We can go and say our original image and our restored image. And you see there that we've been able to do quite a bit of restoration. When I'm shooting a real tough image in the field, I find it generally safer to go in the middle. I make sure that my skies are not overexposed, i.e. blown out, and I don't shoot for the sky exposure, which would then leave the subject underexposed. By shooting with the unfortunate happy middle, you could then go back afterwards and tweak it and get the proper contrast and saturation in those individual areas and restore your photo properly. For understanding Adobe Photoshop, my name's Rich Harrington. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Be sure to check out our resource blog at rastervector.com and keep your eyes out. We have a new book coming out that you're going to want to get. Thanks again.